Five seconds remaining. PSG LGDs turn to ban. Accomplished, and they, they defeated their they defeated their nemesis already, right? OGs At least once. It is time. The third game has begun. Let's go. OG versus PSG LGD. Game three. Game three. Good luck trying to treat that like any other Dota game ever. The game to decide OG or LGD as your grand finalists. Time to see if there's going to be massive changes or not. Uh, we kind of established that both games were... It wasn't, it wasn't the draft that made it, right, Fog? Yeah, it was, just, it, was a, it was just some play stuff that ended up happening. We could see that LGD's lineup, they, the Storm Spirit, of course, is going to, once it gets to the point of the later game, is going to take over. But I think it was a lot of just like, it was a bunch of mistakes that ended up leading to that. Some global silences that were in time perfectly, clutch moves by FYZ or Shaker. So they have, to, they have to be prepared for that one, and OG's pulling out a first phase Spectre. Uh, so, why? So, so, my idea is that last game, OG and LGD, I think both the drafts were okay and then they were comfortable with it especially LGD just winning the game so like like last game we won with it so why, why change and for OG side I feel like they, they just felt like a Bloodseeker wasn't just the right hero for Ana he played well in the laning phase and it was good but they're just like I think we have a good idea against Enchantress we have done it before but maybe just the Bloodseeker wasn't the right one so they just switched to switch to the Spectre Ooh, the instant TB to counter the Spectre though this is such an interesting shift. Picking your carry first, your core position. Ame loves this matchup, though. Yeah. I think every TB player does. It's just like so favorable. Yeah. Every time you, you want to come into TB, you just sunder him. And they're going to ban the Zeus and the Pugna more than likely, right? On the yeah, side Zeus of LTD. Pugna, or they're really scared of it, the Tinker. But if you guys know that this is one of the favorite matchups for LGD, surely OG knows that if they first pick Spectre, or there's going to be a terrible play. Yeah, but they want to go back to their comfort zone. Like, last game, I think, as, as Marge already mentioned, they weren't really in their comfort zone, with their carry at least. Like, he, he played okay, but you could see he was, like, uncomfortable. Like, a, a very seasoned Bloodseeker play, uh, player would have gone for, like, different items. He wouldn't have gone for that Radiance, which is, like, very mainstream nowadays. So a lot of people just go for it without really thinking too much about it. I was starting to think about it more too. I think he was really. He, I think the reason he might have gone for it was he's really relying on the globals to be like perfect, so they can run in and not be worried about everything. But yeah, it's. Yeah. But we have seen the Spectre. I, I personally believe Enchantress should completely destroy a Spectre lane. But mm -hmm. when they played against EG, he actually had like the most CS in the game against an Enchantress lane. So maybe they figured out some magic that we haven't. But on paper, the matchup is really bad. It happened a lot of times, and then. I, I would kind of want to watch replay and then see like the tactics how he did it, but it's been like consistent where Ana does really well against this Enchantress lane. Even though they were losing the lanes last game, in Bloodseeker had like 30 CS when Enchantress had like 15 CS. I like that they did this. This is kind of like a steal in a way, in my opinion too, because they know that LGD could be looking at that one for themselves. So I think that's a really good pick here for OG. They, they have, take out, I know, LGD, they took out the Batrider in the Zeus, not the Pugna. So they want to like protect their Enchantress as well, so you're not yeah. in that really, really painful matchup. I mean, right now OG is lacking in damage, big time. They have like zero damage right now, especially in the early game. Five, six, and I guess Topson will have to make up for it with a mid-hero. And Zeus and Batrider are the amazing heroes against the Terror Blade as well, so they're yeah. protecting it as well. It's Most like of the heroes, right? So LGD got push power, they got late game. Mm, uh, looking, looking for two supports, the FY. What's a good FY hero here? It's not so popular in this uh, meta, but the like, clockwork will be amazing against Silence and Earthshaker so far. And then he that does really true. well with Enchantress in the laning phase. But it's not so good against the Spectre at the moment. You can just uh, dagger out of it and then... Who knows, OG might pick really good course against this, so... What needs to happen for us to see an FY Rupert again? I was thinking the same thing, I was hoping. Because there's an Earthshaker, you know? It's, it's a good one. Fingers crossed. I mean, it's possible, we don't know what they're thinking, but they prefer the like, position for teamfight heroes rather than like, the, the Rubik. 
who is more like a reactive hero rather than an initiator. So they're probably looking more like the okay, Exnova Bane, the other staple, his Witch Doctor and his Bane, I would say his best two heroes. Yeah. That's the protecting lane. They go yeah, back the for the partner, partner of course. Yeah, it has to be. They, they lack damage so much, and they definitely needed something like that. Great versus the two big cards that they showed already, the Enchantress and Tyra Blade. Yep. What saying. This is a Pugna also works pretty well with Spectre, not like any type of combo, but you're just you're pressuring the lane super hard, so you're alleviating a bit of pressure off your Spectre. You're trying to take towers early on too. Mm -hmm. We have seen a lot of uh, Pugna from Thompson, but it can also be flexible and depending on how the mid lane goes, where uh, Seth playing Pugna with the Urshak in the off lane. Yeah, he's been off lane. Great point as well. So they're looking for position four. FY. Definitely need team fight. They have zero team fight right now. I'm liking a uh, clockwork hero game of the Pokemon. It's it looks like a, such a good clockwork uh, game. Clockwork yeah. is amazing here, yeah. The other hero would be he maybe a, maybe a winter. Mm -hmm. Tuscar. I, I think you yeah, want, I want Tuscar. I want like, of four heroes here. There's Spirit Breaker, Tuscar, Earth Spirit, or Clockwork, this kind of heroes. Yeah, I was thinking clock and tusk. I think Tusk can it can be a little annoying versus the silencer in the mid game, especially if you're going for some type of save, but you can put that aggression early on. But they're definitely lacking in the team fight then if they do go for yeah. that route. That's a good point. And it is the clockwork. Good call. Clockwork goblin. The clockwork expert over here, March. <laughs> no, that's not one of my worst heroes from the all. <laughs> I hate that hero, but. All right, what are, what are we lacking? I mean, PSG right now, they're definitely just looking for pickoffs. They don't want to team fight. They want to have the Bane sit like behind the Terror Blade where he's split pushing and catch uh, catch like one or two heroes trying to kill him. But like in team fights right now, they're very inferior. And to be able to fight him, they need a lot of items. They definitely need to BKB on TB. If he gets that, he's pretty much unkillable for them. And that's like the time they're going to be looking for. So we need a team fighty maybe hero. Yeah, or just like a pusher in general, something like a, like a DK. Something along those lines. How about something like pressure. I, I'm okay with Lina here. Like Lina just being, I guess, a uh, blind pick going into their strap. But, but Lina is pretty bad against Spectra. That's in the, in the mid game. Like, if he ever jumps on you, you feel pretty uncomfortable. We'll take out Queen of Pain. Yeah, of course, the summon is special. Yep. Last pick, Quap. I'm thinking something that can just give them damage in team fight. Because I also, yeah, LGDs. They lack some damage in the mid-game, at least. Yeah, they They've do. got the impetus and the metamorphosis, but they need some something else to be able to go through this uh, Pugna in particular. So I want some spell damage. Do you have to worry about the Brood Mother from Set? I have Mother. seen him play it, but he wasn't that good. And maybe... I mean, Brood is always a concern. So I'm not entirely sure how, how good they, they are with it. They the, ban out Invoker. They ban the Invoker. So Ember Spirit expecting... could be quite good as well. Yeah, the... Maybe Ember. He gets his Marana. Gets his they've, Marana. Got the, they've got the Bane, they've got the Clockwork for setup as well. But now it's like all on split push. They're not looking to team fight at all until they get two BKBs up. Mirana is one of the good heroes against Spectre too, where like if you just Moonlight, when they when Spectre uses ult, it's good. Yeah, there's the instant arc warning. So it is going to be that offlane Pugna like you had mentioned. Mm-hmm. And isn't Arc Warden really good against Terrorblade and both the Mirana? Like, we have seen VGG, when, when VG plays against VGJ, it was really good, right? Mm -hmm. It's good mm -hmm. versus Clockwork too, right? It's a little bit, it's a lot harder for the clock to actually find. Game three, ready to go. Here to lead you in, it is Professor Nahaz. Well, I thank you, Shiver. Uh, I think I'm ready for a game three. How about you guys? <laughs> With the first picks in this draft, these teams have put themselves on a little bit of a timer. Enchantress is 10 and 4 in this tournament in games that end before the 40 minute mark. She has a losing record at 5 and 7 in over 40 minute games. Spectra, as you would expect, is completely the opposite. She's 8 and 3 in games that go beyond 40 minutes, only 7 and 12 in games that end before that mark. We are going to get to see the Ame Terrorblade in this game. 31 and 8 since TI7. That is the sixth most win most wins of any player hero combination in professional dota watch for that early power pressure from Thompson. he has 14 tower kills before the 13 minute mark in this event that is more than all but five teams have in this tournament game three between the chinese superpower and the upstart european champions og Delivering you all the action, we've got two of the most iconic voices from Dota 2. Here are Toby One and Cinderin.
Thank you very much. I have to correct Shiva. It's Professor Oak that sends us over. Hello, everyone. I cannot wait for this game three to begin. Game one and two were absolutely awesome. Game three looks like we're going to go the distance. Nice late game picks. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of weird to to see it, but it feels like the game where Terrorblade will not win late game. You look at the other side of the board, and the late game lineup from OG and their team fight is just exceptionally strong. So. I don't know if this is a position that Ame has been in a lot on his Terrorblade, where he should maybe have second cho uh, second thoughts about going very late with his TB. Because absolutely both lineups have a lot to show in that late game, but... As for the early start of the laning stage, you have a one lane with Spectra and one lane with Arc Warden, not the absolutely strongest lanes you can have. And the other side, obviously, we saw the Enchanters of Chalice last game. I think Nahas hit the nail on the head. You, you're definitely going to see a clash of timings. And LGD will be more skirmish heavy, whereas OG's team fight is is quite something. So OG is already trying to prepare to get the early advantage. I'm seeing two spark raids just sitting on either side of the top route. And Exnova is going to tank him up already. There's no one have to deal with that. 13 seconds from now, all about how many runes you can get. And because there's really only Silencer and Anna's hiding in the trees in the bottom lane, it looks like LGD will claim three of the four early bounty runes. Nothing like a good start. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing this bottom lane. We had, in the OG versus EG series, I believe it was, Ana was playing a... He was playing a safe lane Spectre and ended up getting really good farm. I think S4 was on the Enchantress that game and Fly was on Phoenix. And he was playing a safe lane Spectre and got really good farm. So I'm curious to see if LGD will... will be conceding a lot of farm to Ana as well in this case, or if they can pressure him out. In many ways, this lane is weaker than the Phoenix Ench. We'll see. No tail was Bane in that game, though. That is worth noting. A lane dominator, probably stronger than Silencer in most. Yeah, but if Silencer can get the harassment out, at least he's got something. He just can't attack very fast against the Enchantress. This is a bigger downside. The Bane is up for LGD on the top lane, working with Ame against Seb and the Earthshaker Jirax. So a small change up by having Topson come off that Pugner and go onto the mid Arc Warden. And he wants a real good matchup up against Somnus. As much harassment as he possibly can get early on. And that bottom lane. This is when observers get, get uh, worried at TI. <laughs> How do you see that first blood? Ame on top lane and these metal oh, holes to wear off. But then again, you get a double centaur stomp. This is one way to do it. Nervousness is gone. If that battery assault can connect into Notel, it's able to do so. Barrier assault. Oh, it'll what? wear off. It came back over again. Anna tanked up a little bit, but Notel, he'll get away. Oh, yeah. Only barely, though. FY, I think attack moved the ground and redirected to the Spectre because Notel fogged him for a moment. That's a, that's a costly mistake. That's first blood not going their way just yet. And they had such a great setup from Chalice there. And they're going after Chalice chance. on bottom lane. They may oh. just have enough damage, but no. Barely. Nature's attendants are there to attend. Oh, FY coming in behind now. Battery assault, cogs him up. The Centaur can't get through, it's gonna time out. So we won't actually be able to get the stomp off. So now it's FY that Nortel needs to slow him down, curse him up, so there will be the kill going the way of Chalice. Nortel cannot harass back to get a rebuttal. New camp already available for Chalice. We'll be getting the Hellbear Smasher for 45 seconds. Are they gonna block this up or something? Spectral Dagger flies forward. It's only the last word. 25 HP is still alive. Yeah, it's going to heal up to full now with the attendants and play aggressive once again. So this time, Ana's not looking too hard in the early laning stage, but still finding some CS. OG and no... OG just having trouble with the bottom lane, but how's the other lanes looking? 12-2 against Somnus is 10-4, so it's pretty even for Topson as well as Somnus. And Seb's harassment on top lane has been pretty good as well. I mean, hard to stay in that lane where Metamorphosis is down, but... That's why they put the Bane up here. Such a great lane controller. And Ame can find the space to get the CS. Man, FY does not want to let Notel anywhere near this. He actually stacks up the camp so they can get a new one for the Enchantress. It's oh, that the Wild Wing's actually going to be super annoying. Spectre hates this creep. No way to deal with it. Yep, no real way to deal with it. They have no stun. They can maybe get a last word out on the Wild Wing if No-Tail gets vision when it's tornadoing, but doesn't seem likely very right now. Somnus seems to be having a pretty decent time in the mid lane. Pretty even. Got, got harassed back a little bit more, but uh, hits the arrow, follows up with a soft fall, but Thompson 
Puts down the Spark Wraith, and well, Somnus can't really do much about that. Then again, same thing on the bottom lane. The Tornado has arrived up on top lane. Seb and Jirax able to combo together to kill off X Nova. Levels the board up at one apiece. But Anna is just in a, well, he's looking a little bit more windblown than he normally is. Yeah, this is very annoying for him. Hotel isn't looking too hot either. Oh, he's got FY two town portals. Mid lane. Goals. He's coming in with a battery assault. He's going to try and cog up. This all our Somnus. He's got a Mango. So he leaps in to the Starfall. They want the quick kill onto Thompson. Even the extra Starfall connected for support. Arriving from Notel and Jirax. He has no mana though. He cannot cast the Fissure even though it's off cooldown. Just a 10 mana short. Tried to use the stick to get enough mana earlier. Didn't have it. And now that he got one more stick charge, he was on cooldown. So he couldn't get it. LGD grab one, and they got, was that both TPs? I think Shaker and yep. Silence are both TP'd mid to try to help out Thompson, so that's a really big kill. They got both of them, and now FY is rotating bottom lane. He found an Invis rune in the bottom river. So they're going to try and have a crack towards Anna. Spectral Dagger is up, however. This will make it difficult, but FY with a battery assault. Anna holds the dagger, and the cogs push him up. He cannot walk back. He can only fight or go through the trees to the west. He's he chosen the second option, trying to duke away from the battery assault, but every single one! FY is able to connect. Oh, and this will be three or four bounty runes. No tail. It looks like he's trying to steal away one of the dyers. It's probably going to cost he'll, him his life. Yeah, here. he'll lose his life. He's, he's going to get it though. He doesn't have enough life to actually sustain against FY. Battery assault comes up cooldown right now, and that's a level two battery assault. So FY will get the solo kill on the level four silencer. You may have claimed one bounty, but they'll lose the other three and the silencer. Like the play from FY there, choosing to taunt over attacking. A little bit of mental damage. Well, this is OG. They're the kings of spammers. Except they're more voice liners. Big early lead here, though, for LGD. Having a 2k gold lead in the laning stage of this game. Just kind of play big role. It's a nice little pull over from the Radiant side. Going to pull the Dark Creep Wave down because FY, FY will try and capitalize the place. on this. Finds Jirax. He TP'd up towards the top lane looking for the kill. And the Cogs will lock Jirax in. Nothing he can do but die. He's just looking at him again. Hit him, dude. <laughs> no, no. Real men don't look at kills. They just stand there and taunt. And now they can control up the six-minute rune. Arcane for the top. FY is looking at it, but he doesn't need it. Oh, oh okay. No tell will take Unfortunate. it. Unfortunate. <laughs> denied. Nice. Somnus will be wondering what the hell just happened. Because Jirax oh, cogged up again. FY, he never stops. He just keeps going. Long life battery. X Nova will find the last hit. And OG. It's so funny to see, like, we haven't seen Clockwork the whole main event, I think. I think zero games. It might have been one, but I don't know. No game comes to mind. And then FY just pulls it out, and he is, like, destroying this early game. It's 100% Three... participation yep. rate. 3-0-3. Three, three. Six minutes in. Kills in all three lanes. And he can do this because of the matchup bottom being so naturally good for the Enchantress. She doesn't need help, so... And he's even going to get the Observer Ward in mid, sure, why not? Buff up FY a little bit more. Wait until he gets level 6, wait until the Hookshot comes online. It's very dangerous for Arc Warden to deal with. Let Especially if you look Anna's at a Blade left. Mail somewhere down the line for FY. And it's already left to Shrine up. Level 6 has arrived for Chalice. This harassment is going to be a real pain for Anna to deal with. He needs friends, but right now all those friends have moved towards the top lane. Still though, OG's heroes look pretty good on CS. It's mainly been the bounty runes and the kills that separate the two teams right now. Obviously, having to buy that extra bit of regen hurts as well for Ana. He bought so many tangos. Well, he's got his haunt online now, so OG could be planning a play top. Oh, well, Jirax is a good position. Exactly what they're gonna he do. can land this fissure onto X Nova, then get that quick kill. But Clockwork is your rotation once again. FY always wanting to be involved. You get the stuns over on Seb. Cog block him up. And where's his petrol haunt? It ain't coming. They're not playing the, the fight they were looking for. So OG, they're just going to accept their loss as Somnus even arrives to kill secure over on Seb. As Jirax's fissure allow him to run to the east. He has TP available. And thanks to the Observer Ward, some pretty decent vision. Oh, they saw him now. Daybreak. Yeah. They're not, not trying happen. the arrow just yet, at least. Somnus could try for it if he wants to. Yeah, Looks it like he will just be heading back toward that mid lane. There's a wave coming in, so... There's actually space getting created. Oh, like, Hana, man. It's so hard. Yeah. Every time he tries to get a CS, he will take a few hundred damage. Yep, he has to TP back to base to pick up boots. 
What they have need, to what make a Haunt play now. Yeah, the, the, the team needs to work together and just get this kill on top. They need to kill off Ame. They need to kill off the biggest hero that LGD has to offer. Which right now, they have all top three net worth positions, so it's a lot of them. Nice observer ward from Vexnova. Now they see just how much power in the rotations coming in from OG, but they don't know where Jirax is. They may not care when Arme can just shrine up. There's your Spectral Haunt, looking for the target. It's the Nightmare X over. He delayed the fight nice and quickly, and there still has a level 2 Brain Sap. Fisher has to cancel this off. He'll sap the life out of Seb, and the rest of the support is now arriving. So Bane has died, but how much is OG committed in for this one? Seb must fall. So a support for the off lane, tower. and as you said, T1 Tower being pressured. TP in toward the mid from FY. He's not level 6 though, so can't go for a hookshot play on Thompson with some backup. At the very least, Thompson will be able to force him away here, do some damage. And they're level 3 spark rates. FY's gonna be careful about him. That's why Thompson is the perfect little triangle wall that blocks out LGD. You see FY actually tanking a up a couple of them on purpose, has the tranquil boots, so... Just clearing up the litter in mid lane for a bit. How long do they wait? before OG can actually get something more. It's, Charles it's is hard. becoming a real problem, and Thompson's the only one who's moving forward. He's getting closer towards that level one Necro. It's difficult for OG because they don't have cooldowns yet. They have no Haunt, there's no Global, so Silence is not very strong. Shaker is not strong either. Neither of their supports has boots in this game. 10 minutes in, Jerex and No-Tail are incredibly poor. You look at the clockwork, he has more net worth than the enemy two supports combined. Yep. And it's going to get worse. There's another two bounty runes on bottom. Yep. LGD were already able to take one on the top lane. They got three again. Yep, three and one. Decrepify top lane with the drain. Oh, Bane. Nightmare from X Nova. So hard to go on any target when the Bane's in the neighborhood. Both him and his allies. Book going on to Jerax. They're trying to get him his level six. This means Global Silence is still a full level away. Mid lane. Yeah, Thompson's got a couple of extra friends, or just one. This is Clone. It's pretty convenient against Flux to just have a Kobold. <laughs> it's running next to you. It'll tank up everything. And give you the movement speed. Clone will now die off and the pressure will continue. Ball up on top lane, Seb. It's gone from bad to worse for him. 1-3 and FY has gone from, well, great to greater. 4-0-5. I don't think I've seen... We don't see much roaming nowadays. And I, I think this is the single hands down best roaming performance of the whole tournament that FY is pulling out in this game. He's doing everything right. All the right movements, all the right decisions. Target selection. Looks like he's, he's gonna find again. another one. No tell under the tower. FY can do no wrong. Keeping the 100% rate up nicely. Jurax, he's got Echo Slam available. Needs to let it go. The damage oh. will spill out so heavily into Somnus. The Fidge is unavailable too. But Chalice has the sprite, so he'll survive. Oh, it's something for OG. It's nice that Jurax gets that kill, so maybe he can get a Blink Dagger. Before the 20 minute mark, if something, if some more good things happen, still really far away. Still, two towers do fall in favor of LGD. There are now three towers up. Top three Set. net worths. FY's got a hook shot in four, three, two, one. He wants to let it rip. There's already the uh, Horn Illusion. The Horn Illusion cancels it off. Seb will have a little bit to fight with, but they're both locked inside the cogs. No tell in the best position here. They can now turn onto FY. He's worth so much. No stuns, no nothing, no kill. That was really fortunate from OG. I don't think that was intended. That they were like, oh, there's definitely a clockwork going to hook shot in. So we'll uh, just Chalice wants to go one on three. Animal moving close. No tell. So much damage from the impetus. Now Chalice knows he can stand his ground and fight, Anna cannot fight back, Chalice does way too much damage, so Nortel has to put the last word on the Somnus, here comes the arrow, the Nightmare from X Nova. this is classic as all time, they get the kill on the Jirax, the simplest setup of all, and another Impetus, he's not in range, but Somnus is, double leap with the Starfall and the double damage rune, Anna, one charge is available, he'll get the life. And Somnus... Jerex was hoping the, the tip would deal damage. It did not this time. <laughs> this is not mutation. <laughs> FY is looking again for more targets. Seb gonna find him. Decrepify and Blast. You got the TP coming in from the ES and they hoped he would run north. He'll run south. FY. OG. And they now on the now. Easter egg hunt. They found the egg. FY with the cogs pushing back to Urax. But he's got friends. Arme. No metamorphosis available. But a TP chance is coming to the fight.
Seb working on the four staff. He's closing in on that. That's one very big item that OG need to probably get multiple off. Ooh, wide yes. ball. Seb. Now, Still in trouble, though. Yeah, he's in real trouble. Georax needs to land a fissure to help him out. It's all going to come a little bit too late. As Thompson puts down the spark rate, still no fissure line that Georax could see that would be any real change. Apart from doing a bit of damage, Somnus, Arrow towards the top oh. lane. Creep barely tanks it up, and it was, was walking really back close. into that, but it's bottom lane where they're fighting once again. The fissure is out. This time the damage onto the clockwork. They have nowhere near enough. They actually cannot get past Chalice. But this will help. Anna TP's over. Spectral Dagger flying after the Enchantress. 2 0 1 on Chalice. They want to get the kill. FY's in the neighborhood. Cogs available. And he'll actually pull off the Cogs, taking the regeneration rune and destroying the chance for OG to fight. This OG lineup can't really kill a hood entry right now. I think they need to combine three or four heroes to stand a chance. They need Thompson and maybe even a Global Silence to get it. When he gets the fourth staff, it's, it's actually just feels impossible for them to kill him. So Chalice can put so much pressure on the map. And they're bringing in the extra help, FY. And you was deep watered on the hillside. They kind of need to have an observer ward up there too. No town gonna smoke up. Falkwork's already backed off. Hawk shot, hawk shot. Looks, and then pulls out twice. Refusal at the gate. And OG are baiting. They're really hoping for a fight here so that they can activate their Echo Slam. Without a dagger, it's very difficult for Jerex to find an opportunity against Clockwork. So they're hoping that they are going to run into them. X Nova putting the Sentry Ward down. Bounties. Sees Topson for half a second. Doesn't like it. Not with the Ancient Prowl is there. It's three runs for LGD again. Yeah. They get three every single iteration, so just keep building that advantage. Keep finding that farm. Topson is still keeping up a little bit. Like he's just finished up the Hand of Midas, needs to come out in the Courier. He got a level 1 Necro book so he could fight earlier on and farm faster too. He also doesn't have boots. He also doesn't have boots, but hey. Well, he's probably going to buy it soon, I would imagine. Go the Weaver style. No Tail got boots before Tops. No. Anna may be in a bit of trouble. Low on life. Has TP scroll available, goes into the trees, but Clockwork Rocket sees him clearly, and this will allow X Nova. Fiend's Grip committed. Global Silence will break him free. Anna has to go deeper into the trees. TP is available. It's a big ability to burn, but when you miss the hook shot, Anna can now TP out safely. Waste a bit of time, but up on top, no tell. No, he doesn't find Somnus. FY has to fully just guess in this situation. He doesn't have a rocket player to scout with, so he's just trying his luck. If that hook shot hits, maybe he can grab the kill on Ana. Oh, Seb, he's waiting. He just wants the tower in the trees. X Nova doesn't see him. Moonlight shadows down, but Seb will claim the tower. It's good money, it's position, and yeah, he's 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 dead. Like he, he's de dead, dead, not dead, really not dead. TP's out. Somnus was not in range to get an arrow off in time, so this TP's out after Nightmare. Yeah. He knew there was no grip. It was used for the kill attempt bottom. I'll find Jirax instead. Moving over underneath the shrine, they got the life, but looks like Thompson wants to try and fight. He's got his Necro book up in seven seconds' time. Chalice trying to run back out, but the spark rate's there. The arrow just threads the needle of OG. Chalice will finally fall. Anna, the man to find the kill, and Spectral Haunt gets it back into the engagement. Somnus is so low, and X Nova, he'll walk into the spark rate, but it won't matter. Seth just explodes him with a nether blast, and LGD, why does this keep happening in this series? It's just 15, 10 minutes into the game, the dive comes real. And the advantage starts to swing. Yep. Anna is starting to come online. He has the urn. He is close to Yasha. We'll be going for that Manta style first. On this, this is kind of the first stage of the game when FY was just flat out showing in a lane for a while. So OG felt very confident knowing that Clockwork couldn't connect. He was farming the bottom wave. And Enchantress, she felt immortal. Said it was going to take three or four heroes to kill it. They brought them. Yep. And just barely got him, by the way. <laughs> it was close to living against all four. It looks like LGD is slowing up the pace of the game now. Um, yeah. He's trying to farm up towards his BKB. Somnus, he's got the Maelstrom and he's the one that can actually add the pressure. Somnus actually low. And uh, has no earned charges available. FY, however, surprisingly enough, has a whole bunch. Hook shots, and he hits! Connect onto Anna. No spectral dagger available. Anna will have to fight back out again. The arrow flies oh. forward. Anna barely misses it. No tell. Global silence off cooldown in two seconds time. Anna will make his break into the tree line, but he cannot survive long enough. Enough Maelstrom procs. And Big LGD kill. find the kill. But I still worry that LGD had the bigger issue. It's the Arc Warden. It's the mass amounts of Necro books that can come later on. He's going for the Maelstrom with the Hand of Mice. He has boots, so hey, success. Yep. At the very least, they have an Enchantress to deal with it to an extent. Yep. 
just to steal a couple of those necro necro units or one. Yeah, well, if you have the low, the high level enchant, it's a 10 second cooldown, so you can definitely mess with the arc warden quite a bit. But for now, Thompson's keeping it level one. We'll see if he even wants to level it up later. You you imagine he will, but wants to optimize his farming, and obviously Maelstrom is the better farming item. Closing in on it now, he actually has it. Oh, they were quoting the stamp for like how, how much money was it? It was a lot of cash that was given over. 10k, I think. Yeah, 10,000 10, gold from just Necro units. I believe there was also a Lycan who had a Necro book in that game, so made it a bit more extreme. But yeah, the game is definitely slowing down, and OG are they're gaining gold. The question is how valuable the gold is from a fighting perspective. I still think OG's biggest strength is when they get this Blink Dagger on Shaker, which is suddenly. Within reach, 200 gold away. Yeah. Jerex, he's got a lot of space, so... He's gonna farm up the bottom lane. Oh, Maybe another reason to why X Nova's on a bit of a smoke mission. But uh, he'll come underneath the Radiant Observer Ward. Sees Topsum. That's the real one, too. They ain't no clone. Six seconds of the clone is up, but they'll need more help. X Nova can do nothing about this. And TP out in bottom lane. Jerex gets the Blink Dagger and escapes Chalice. So the team fight item for OG has now arrived. X Nova. Terrible. I think he actually put that sentry ward down at the last second, so uh, OG did actually see him plant that. There was a lot of pings that came out quickly. Mm -hmm. But I'll look for that vision later on. Uh, what else we're looking for is BKBs. So, Marana closing in on hers. Terrorblade has it in 100 gold. That's when LGD's lineup becomes a lot stronger. It's a very good spike for them in terms of just fighting capabilities. OG's lineup has nothing on BKBs. Yep. This Arc Warden item build, well, later on, if he keeps going the physical route, he'll be able to deal with it, but for now, nobody in BKB should die from LGD. Terrorblade's is the first one to really finish weak. it. He needs yep. the Curry to bring it out to him, and the top lane's already been pressured. LGD not in the perfect position to defend it. Now they have fortification, so that will at least delay things and allow Chalice to push the bottom lane. Steals the Radiant Catapult. And that'll be the Tier 2 tower for the Tier 1 tower. as a straight trade-off. LGD will still be happy with this. I think OG are okay with it too. They're buying time. You said they got the better late game, right? So as long as they can survive... It depends. Both lineups are a sick late game. I think it just doesn't feel like a clear-cut Terrorblade will do great late in this one. So... There are a lot of solutions on the Radiant side for this Terrorblade. Everything from Aghanim's Pugna to Echo Slam to Arc Warden. Of these Necro units. <laughs> Ame sees the cash and goes for it under a gold apiece. No tell knows where Clockwork is. Saw the rocket trajectory. They'll be playing very defensively behind this tier 2 tower. It feels like just a, a matter of time before LGD try to make their aggressive move. The question is what they're waiting for. If they want the 25 minute bounty runes, if they want to try to grab the Roche with the BKB of Somnus. Roshan does sound nice, but you need to start bringing down the towers. OG don't want to wait. They've, they've had enough of this. They got Anna with, with Spectral Horn available. They can't kill this uh, inch without using Echo Slam. Yep. I don't think so. On Thompson. Ready to push forward using his clone. Uh, a little attendance, but OG do not want to commit. It's kind of funny to watch Chalice steal a, steal a creep and then it gets minus out pretty quickly after oh, Anna. Anna. Yeah, Nightmare into Arrow. Help must come, but help is nowhere near. LGD, a huge pickoff once again, finding Anna outside the base. Just went out one wave too far in this situation. LGD have such a, an iron grip on this Radiant jungle. You got your answer for Topson. It's not the ne Necrobook level up, it's uh, full Mjolnir is his item of choice. Yeah, I'm trying to find a solution for this incoming Terrorblade swarm of illusions. Yeah. Of course, can't just put it defensively on the Spectre. Pretty strong. It's also a great side lane push. BT is a queued up next. So the clone can add a lot of momentum, which LGD are not really that great at countering. And they're great at countering heroes like Nature's Prophet. You're able to just jump around with the clockwork, get information, but. A little bit harder. Here comes OG. Clone will be created. They look towards Roshan. He's down to 3.5k. Spectral Haunt is up. And X Nova. Here comes your Spectral Haunt to the front lines. Thompson using the clone inside. And the echo!
go! Jurax, he got the jump! The perfect hit! Thompson's got the double kill! They've just got the numbers! That's what happens when you can clone yourself! FY, he's trapped inside the cogs, but his OG will willingly trapped in there with him! LGD in real trouble! Anna has the double kill! The buyback comes in from FY! And Is felt, he gonna pull it off? Ooh, he you cannot! Felt like they were waiting for the BKBs. Terrorblade has his, doesn't use it. Marana, 700 gold away from hers, can't use it. And OG just find the most important fight of the entire game. 5-0 fight and a buyback from FY. Is that, is that the engagement that puts OG into the TIA Grand Finals? It's a huge swing. It is a it's gonna really be coming big swing. their way. LGD, we're at about a 7,000 net worth advantage. This is already coming down to about zero, and we'll watch it again. It starts off, X Nova initiated on, and how much did LGD burn on Topson's just clone? They just walk out in the middle of the river, FY. Doesn't seem to be able to find an angle at all with the clockwork. And finally, when he does in the end, it's way too late. Terrorblade in this situation, I think Ami just really out of position, just walking in there. They present themselves for an easy killing for OG. And now I think LGD just will be slowing down again. It feels unlikely for them to find the type of fight that they'll need. Need to wait for that PKB on Marana. And hopefully for them, OG will make an aggressive play that they can counteract. Anna is now finished up. Manta looking towards Radiance. He's becoming that late game carry that the spec wants to be. And all the money for the Arc Warden, and he is definitely, it's just that level one Necrobook is purely for farming. You got Hurricane Pike queued up as his next primary item. A lot of push, a lot of shove, and the 25 minute rune's being battled for. It'll be a 2 2 trade off. For the first time in this game, OG breaking even on bounty runes, it feels like. They might have done it once, but. Chalice comes in, sentries down. That was confidence, but FY hooks him behind, but he can't do anything else. Global Silence comes up, so Blade Melt makes OG think twice about initiating onto FY. But they bring the support. LGD just wanted a quick pick, but Seb chasing after FY. A perfect nightmare from X Nova disengages the attack of the Pugna. I actually think LGD got what they wanted. I think they were hoping to bait out a global silence in this situation, and now that it's down, they might be able to find a fight. Seb. Yep. The no McCabe will protect him. There's still Spectral Haunt if they want to bring oh. that arena with the Echoes, and they'll do exactly that. Jirax! My god, he's good. Looking to chase off the Enchantress, draining her out. She'll be a way to safety. The sprite's giving her some health. Anna wants to dive. He's got an Aegis Immortal and a desire to kill. The arrow flies forward. He'll dodge it. Everyone will dodge it. Another Decrepify and Blast with the Fissure. Is there a drain? They have nothing. It's on cooldown for the moment. But OG, a lot of pressure being applied towards the mid. They want Terrible to go for more. In. Blink Dagger from Ame looking for the kill. He can't go into the Pugna. He can go up to No Town. Now Pugna, the Grimify wears off oh, the attack. Arrow. He doesn't actually see him. The Glimmer Cape protects him out. The arrow doesn't connect, but they're looking for more. Anna, he's low on life. He's got the Aegis, the Immortal. That's life number one. And being surrounded so heavily by LGD, this is life number two. I think this is the second game we've seen on the main stage where Terrible picks up a Blink Dagger and just wins a team fight off it. Just this surprise of getting jumped by that really, really strong slow reflection 5.5 second duration. Just runs them down and gets the kills. And oh. obviously a key to this fight, similar to last game, OG with ultimates on cooldown. They had no Haunt, they had no Echo Slam, and they had no Global Silence. So when that's the case, LGD will try to strike and take an advantage. And OG probably just overstepping their boundary, really. When these spells are on cooldown, I don't even think they can push towers. They feel confident. They want to go for it. That looks like a lot of emotion in the booth. When you're this close, both teams, a victory away from the grand final. Sometimes the momentum just gets the better of you. We'll slow it up again. Arc Warden can add the pressure on top. If only he could finish his BT. FY actually kills the creep. He was trying to send the clone too, but let's look at this fight once more. In the mid, the blink forward from Arme. No telling Seb, but just non-factors. It was still a great Glimmer Cape at the very end that allowed Seb to survive. And Thompson in the middle of nowhere just got killed off. Arna tries to escape, but is not able to. That could have gone even worse for OG. They were close to losing their Pugna too. Yep. But they minimize the casualties to at least only the three. This is what LGD needed to try and just swing the momentum around once more. 
This graph is just, you know, it's, it's arcing to say the least. And it's not even just the goal one, it's the experience one that swings up, then back down again. No one has control of this series. Now everyone defensive. Mandasan pushes out the bottom for the Spectre. And Seb is the only one who's kind of putting himself in a risky position for OG. He's got Glimmer Cape and Four Staff to get away, and he's now looking for a Dagon build up too. They want to nuke, they want to kill. They need to put the fear into the Terra Blade. Oh, oh yeah, Terra Blade. used his dagger. He's got Manta in one second time, though. I think Ame would have maybe. Oh, he didn't have meta. He was three seconds off. I think he might have even tried for that kill if. If he had it. Battery Assault, you hear it going off again. Clockwork found his target, it's no tell. Brain Sap from Exit over, kills, secures it. Thompson wants to help out, putting down the sprites. A lot of damage to come from him. Seb pushed away with the bubble from Thompson. Protection available, and the Spectral Haunt. They need the vision, they need that moment. But where do they go? Somnus and Arme, so quick to run around the side. Thompson again with the boy in the bubble scenario. Arme will just be right on top of it. Thompson walking away as far as he can. The arrow won't connect, but the rest of the damage will. Durex blows the Echo Slam on just FY. I say just FY, he's still 5 1 15, but now they don't have that. And LGD, Sap. they want the extra kill, Seb in the trees, the damage, the rocket reveal, and well, Army just turns around. Says he can't claim it. Still a good fight for LGD there, they managed to, especially the kills on Thompson are really important. He is so much of the Radiant net worth, big kills to get. We were starting to pull ahead of Ame on net worth, but now Ame will be overtaking him by about 1500. Oh, ease. Bottom. Easy grab for Murano. And Anna, he's still making progress, closing in on that Radiance, so... Couldn't really connect on the Haunt. At the very least, didn't die. Oh, look, For now. follow the illusions. Oh. oh no! He feeds Crypt! He feeds Crypt on the illusions! They Nightmare at least Anna, but... X Nova dies almost instantly, the arrow will be off target, they have to commit hookshot, FY's got the sun control, Anna trying to run through the trees, doesn't have the life to survive. He'll go down. Meanwhile in mid, the pressure is coming. Thompson. He'll respawn now, so maybe... Yeah, he's TPing forward. And I'll make him look at him. He's got a lot of strength to work with. That Reaper. Reaper sitting on the Terra Blade. Because it's just the clone. And Charles is out of mana. And he almost has heart. Yeah, he does. That's I mean, it's really farm. This is a unique build to see. I don't think we very often see Terra Blades go for heart in this position. Most of the time it is the Eye of Scotty or Butterfly. But valuing that HP reset in the fight, obviously a lot of health coming out from this item. Does he have to go pure damage now? Like, he looks pretty cluttered in his item. Like, you've got Dragonlance in there, he's going Butterfly as the next one. Yeah, I think but, but what are you starting to replace? Seb trying to go for the solo kill up on top, and now TP support's coming in. The Arc Warden wants to help out. Global Silence will arrive, and Thompson looking for the engagement. But Seb, he is toast. Absolutely toast. One quick brain, Seb will finish the job. That's just the Thompson clone. That puts up the fight against the rest of LGD, but it puts up a hell of a fight! Yeah, it's really strong. Thompson is very farmed in this game, and of course, Arc Warden with that pretty ridiculous 3 strength gain. When you hit these high levels, and the health talent at 15, pretty tanky. Do you go the 30%? Uh, um, it's hard. I think both talents are really good this game. It's just, in general, a really good talent line. I would imagine he does prioritize lifesteal in this one, though. Has to be able to stand and man fight. The yeah. Terra Blade will blink inside his bubble and try to fight him. There will be a Clockwork hook shouting in, too. Well, Terra Blade is trying to do that exact thing to the Chlorine on top. Quick Hurricane Pike away. Thompson gets to fight a little bit longer, even an extra Spark Wraith. Not oh, being a problem to Arme, but... Right. Yeah. Oh, it's so close. It expires, like, last second. Well, we'll claim that little bit of a bounty. Clockwork. Feels like LGD still have better control of the map. Yeah, the clones yeah. are pushing in the top lane, but the runes, the camps, and they, they have all these seem two to belong really to LGD. good aggressive wards. It's the top warding from LGD that is allowing them to play like this. They cover all movement into the top lane from OG will be super obvious unless they use a smoke. And I think OG are just kind of limited on smoking options. They don't seem to have any on them right now. Not on the courier. So they're very much locked in place inside their base for now. Is Anna actually... Okay, so he's, he's getting keeping, his Radiance. Yeah, he is. He's so close to it, but... That also means a Reflection Illusion that has Radiance, though. Yes. Problematic for OG if you're trying to find, like... You just have to buy Monkey King bars no matter what. 
But that's not the build that Ark One's going for. He's trying to get a Manta style of his own. Moonlight Shadow. This all out X Nova to close the distance. No tail. Oh, that was so close to cancelling. The hook shot forward. Arrow follow up. Thompson's in trouble. Down for 75 seconds. Anna is nudging in the bottom lane, so there may be a small consolation prize for OG in the form of the T1 tower. And the Radiance has now arrived on Anna. But LGD, they're coming down mid. And they're taking top. They got such great split damage. The Roshan is up in 40 seconds. That will be shortly before Thompson spawns, fortunately for OG. Ame blinks right up to Seb, into the middle of the base. Seb has to grip a fight quickly, but Ame, he doesn't want to stop. He's still got Metamorphosis, they're going to beat into the tier 3 tower. That's one of those moments, you just want to force the buyback, you want to force the Global Silence. Buyback is there, Global Silence still being held as LGD retreat. Big and win for them. If Thompson dies again, it's so hard for them to defend their base. I don't think they have enough damage to kill a Terrorblade OG without the arc. Up. OG are coming. They actually want to fight. Fissure catching the Mirana. They got the day gone, but Somnus burns the BKB. That's the 9 second one down. Spectral Haunt, which is the target. Where do you want to go? It ain't towards Somnus. It's over towards Chalice. Stranded over next to the shrine. He's looking for a push out. Hurricane Pike's available. He'll get down. And it will follow. Nightmare again. Disabling step. Fissure stunned from Jirax. FY's trapped there, but no, he's not. He's got the hook away. The attacks will follow through. FY will TP up for anyone else can follow. The Observer will throw him down, but now OG with Bane dead. And no hook shot available, and Clockwork all the way back at base. They want to go for Roshan, but that battling through the spark rates. This fight is really hard for LGD. They got to be careful. Ame, they have no metamorphosis. Ame, that hard. He's got so much life. Anna wants to finish the job. Roshan still being brought down. Thomas will arrive for the fight. The arrow. Anna. Well, he's done up for the moment. Now the imp impetus damage from Chalice, but no, Gerax. He hits the stun. You'll get a pop down at least for the fight. They're coming in thick and fast. Arme's BKB will wear off in a second. FY wants to fight. Hookshot forward into Thompson. Trying to push him out of the cog. He can't do so. FY Blade Mel makes it difficult to engage, but not for Anna. He's happy with oh, this one. FY wants to survive. Thompson survives. Chalice will not. The blast was there from Seb. Buybacks. How much can you burn? Hotter than a curry, here comes LGD into the Roshan, they're gonna claim it, where is the support, where's the follow-up, they can't blink, actually there's a blink to Fissure, it won't come in time, Aegis the Immortal, it belongs to LGD. It costs them, but not that much actually, they're 8k gold ahead still, I you believe their advantage before that was 10, it was Ana with buybacks. the buyback. Oh buybacks, Mirana, Enchantress, Clock for LGD. And it was Anna and Thompson from the other side, but Thompson looking for the kill onto Arme. Arme, you'll actually burn the cheese to get the life up. Marl on bottom lane, ex Nova is the nightmare. Fiend scripts up too, but so is Anna. He'll arrive, and ex Nova, you do not stand a chance. Maybe with a little bit of help, FY. Hook shots forward, Arme is there to fight. Sunder still available, Anna will go up. Jirax, he wants to try and help out the Fissure. We'll get the sun on the terror He's blade, keeping him out of the fight. And Somnus, he'll looking for Anna, he'll find the damage. Okay. No! He turned around! He attacked the wrong unit! They'll escape! Seven's on the run back out, but Jirax leaping forward. He's got the Aghanim Scepter over on this ES. A lot more maneuverable. Thompson's got that little bit, <laughs> he's got the clone there to help. But Jirax into the trees. One more jump. He wants to go for a TP scroll. And Arme wants to go for a beverage. He's leaving. Oh, that play from Somnus. If he would have got the Spectre there, that would have been... Uh, that would have been six minutes without buyback still for Ana. The biggest possible kill he could have found. <laughs> but OG just barely get Ana out of there. They find two kills of their own. It is only the supports, but still buying time. The cheese was expended, as you mentioned. So only the Aegis remains as a true advantage here for LGD. They also used Metamorphosis. So now there's a bit of downtime where maybe OG will try to look for a fight. They have Echo and Global ready. And Haunt in 60. Yep. No one <laughs> can have a buyback in this game anymore. The illusions from Mana are causing some problems, but Arme very happy to deal with it. He's got the Butterfly available. Finding himself low on Mana, no Crystal Maiden in this game. Flies out the Clarity, switches the SM White in and out. Seb wants to blast the bottom, but let's have a look at this fight once again. So X Nova tries to set it up, have FY join them. But Jirax with his Aghanim Scepter, so more maneuverable in the fights. And then Somnus finds him here. And all the he needs to do is around. keep running up, but... He A-clicked the ground and an illusion actually came over and took the attention away. Does he do that? Does he want the instant attack the second he comes up and yes, sees him? Yes, absolutely. It's because he wants to hit right away when he goes up the high ground, but... 
That little illusion in from Ana, saving his life. And then it was just too much. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Echo. Echo slam. We come back in. Oh, that's an Aegis. Yeah, Jerox claims it. And then leap away. Good. <laughs> FY is looking for a rebuttal, he's gonna find it, this is a big one too, but no! Chirax, the Enchant Totem, so quick on it that the Battery Assault doesn't actually interrupt him. This Aghanim Scepter is so good, this game. It's all about spacing. You want to disengage from the Terra Blade, you want to disengage from the Clockwork, and find yourself that superior teamfight position. Now, LGD have two MKBs, so as far as positioning goes, the Arc Warden Magnetic Field is a lot less of a threat. With MKB on Enchantress and Marana, you imagine Terrorblade would have maybe thought about getting one, but Ame is going for the Hex. He wants to blink in and Hex straight away. He's going to replace his treads most likely for this. Has the movement speed from the Butterfly to use whenever he wants. Taking the bottom tier to your tower. That, re that leaves only one remaining out of tower on the entire map, and that's the Dire Tier 2 on top lane. And it's sitting at two-thirds. The bases are practically intact apart from the mid lane of OG. And right now, this is all about the side lane pressure. This is about the pickoffs. Who can you find? There's so much on the line. A guaranteed top two position at TI. Yeah, you'll take that. Top three's nice, top two better. And you get to watch multiple games, learn something about your opponents. Yeah, no They have to play their hearts out to stay in the tournament, so. No pressure of the lower bracket. And these games, just in the in the back end of the playoff bracket, have just continuously go to three. They're marathons. And the bounty runes. Still a 2-2 trade off, 40 minutes in, so no advantage for either side. We're starting to reach the point soon where you're gonna start to six slot up. Terrorblade now has a scythe. He's running no boots, Terrorblade. Not required when you got the flutter oh, from the butterfly. He even has 420 move speed without it. So <laughs> he's very fast. 20 move speed talent, <laughs> really? all of the agility. Really? 420? Sure. Oh, okay. He has 420. Yeah, he has 420. Great. He has 536 with flutter. That's, that's, not, quick. that's not so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a code for something. Yeah. Well, LGD. So what do you do here? Do you just wait for next Roshan? Is, is that it? You're still three minutes away from potential respawn time, but the later this game goes, Thompson just looks to be getting bigger. He's finished the MKB, he's got an answer to the Butterfly of the Terror Blade. The side lanes continuously pressure out. How long can, can LGD hold this line? They don't look to be strong enough to keep the Greek waves on OG's side of the river. I think what you need to do as LGD is you need to have Ame push out one of the sides and the other four. I, you nice push rocket. out one of the sites, and the yes, moment you've successfully done it, you smoke down to him. We'll have to go for almost a blind talk, and that's exactly what FY does. Four staff down, Seth begins his TP, and Totem jump away, and the Blink Dagger. They cannot catch Jirax. More time wasted of LGD. That's a heart. That's one very big spec, and she's going for the for the Scardi next, too. So a lot of life already at 3.7k. Not including what's going to happen with the dispersion. No Silver Edge builders on LGD. Then you add the Scardi to it. Who's got more life? Put him in a bubble too. <laughs> Extra layers. I think the most important thing for LGD is that Ame gets in. Yeah. They need him to be in the middle of the fight in his BKB. So that he's able to hit inside the bubble. And he's the or that on he spec jumps. too, right? Like that's what you need. Yeah, Create. the Reflection of Spec will be useful too. Can, yeah. of course, be dispelled, but... Low cooldown on Reflection. T-Rex in the trees. Chalice running up. Spark Wraith is just on the edge of the tree line. Bottom lane's pushing in quite nicely for LGD. Yeah, LGD have set up a good situation now. They've pushed out bottom far, they've pushed out middle far. So now they can go for exactly this. I think this is this is what they need to do. Marana's going to connect from the right-hand side and check the bottom rune here at 42 minutes. We'll be very happy to find this exact one. It's a double damage rune waiting for her. But yeah, the pressure is coming in. LGD, how do they engage? Thompson's just sending a couple of illusions out in the bottom lane, so they do no, long, no longer have any kind of vision of OG, because they're not having to fight the waves. They see Jirax, they see Seb, but OG, they smell it. It's a foul breeze. So they go and hide inside their base. Yeah, the map is really dangerous right now, so even if the smoke fails from LGD, they still maintain the lane pressure. They're going back toward mid, just this one Terrorblade illusion bottom, can easily push out two waves. 
No. Obviously OG want to counteract it, so they send Ana down here. 30 seconds until you have Roshan possibly up. Thompson was able to TP his clone onto the top lane. That, that creep had 40 HP. Now the jump hex. in, they found the Hex. Quick Fisher from the side set. Four staffed ones. They want to keep the chase going. Chalice triggering the BKB, but Glimmer Cape, the dust was available and Sep will fall. 80 seconds on the sideline, but buyback is available. Anna's pushing in the bottom lane in the meantime. Spectral Haunt will bring him into the fight. And the top lane's pressured in by the illusions of the Arc Warden. Don't know what LGD can achieve from here unless it's a quick Roshan, and it is. It's 20 seconds before Roshan is up. This is what they need. They need it now. Yep, Ame's taking care of bottom. Spawning illusions. Spectro showing herself. Illu on Illu action. OG may not even be able to check this uh, in time. And Thompson sent down a clone to bottom, but nobody is checking Roche. If only LGD knew, they would be in position for it right now, but nobody is having a look. He's up. Maybe they will and... check it soon. Oh, no tail. Oh, he missed the hook. Oh, boy. Well, that's problematic, but he's got the movement speed. Stunned up. Spark Ray's arriving. Now the Spectral Hawk comes out, looking for the target. Ame reveals himself, goes in to the big Terror Blade. Metamorphosis, while well, Anna finds the kill into X Nova, it's just a poor support, but everyone from LGD, they rotate over, they want the big kill, Anna goes over the trees, but the Global Silence makes it difficult to get the last minute damage, and Anna just tanks through it, he'll get one kill before dying, buybacks are available, but Ame, he'll Sunder, swapping the life with the clone of Thompson, and Charles is the man, dishing the damage. And if OG wants to buy back these cores, it will be very expensive for them. It will be. Honest buyback costs 1,800 gold. Top costs 2,500. Jumping in. Jump away from Girax. No talent. Oh, cannot do the, the same thing. Hook shot from FY into the back of Arme. Bit of One miscommunication. Big wingspan to get around. So 45 minute bounty runes. Chalice will look. And now LGD no. Roshan's available. The Metamorphosis is running out. And I look towards Girax. The He's potential really man away. that can save this, but they may not even know that Roshan's up too. I think even if they knew, they feel they feel uncertain about whether this is a fight they can take or not. They would have to expend probably two of their core buybacks, the really big ones, to get over here. But it's and they know it's that Refresher Shard on the Terra Blade. Yeah, they know. They probably know that Somnus can buy back two and TP in on the shrine, so can connect really easily. It's a really difficult decision to make when you have this limited vision on the map, and they will end up giving it up. Probably we're just hoping that the Roshan was not available, but. Like you said, a good respawn timing for LGD. Yep. Ame has the refresher shard. He's holding it in the backpack for now. So good on Terrorblade, this item, late game. He even wants to buy a refresher anyway. We'll see it again. So Anna took a lot to bring him down. But Anna was just so stranded. No one else there to help him. And just He barely got the Mirana kill before he died. Can't believe how much it was worth. That's, that's 1,177 gold for the kill on the Mirana. Yep. And it goes into the Scotty. Or the buyback. <laughs> Either or. And here comes LGD. Try. Okay, now that's just a clone on bottom. FY doesn't want anything to do with this. And they still need Somnus to come back to life. Pushing into this OG lineup is so hard. <laughs> like, what? It's like, if, if you overcommit, you're bringing all your illusions, you're bringing an army. Oh, wait, there's Echo Slam. There's Echo Slam, there's Magnetic Field. Yep. There's the Haunt, Global Silence. The team fight of OG is so strong that I think what LGD are hoping to happen is that they somehow find a fight outside the base or just get one key pick that they can snowball the fight off because inside the base of OG, it seems almost impossible to go in. Maybe some sort of multi-frontal attack where Terrorblade is splitting from the other four can very quickly connect with the Blink Dagger. And that reflection cooldown time is uh, six seconds. That's uh, that's wonderful. They just stay up forever. And he's looking for a target. Uh, Anna doesn't go down in to the vision, but then again, Jirax. They want to chain sun him up. They have trouble. BKB swapping the life with Thunder. Ame wants to go again. Refresher shot still there, so he doesn't care about burning the metamorphosis if he can find the kill. Especially when Echo Slam is now down for a hundred seconds. They did not find the kill. Still feels like it's going to be hard to go up high ground even with Echo down. But it's something for LGD. Thompson's just spamming out as much as he wants to with the uh, with the Tempest doubles. Still doesn't hit that 25 just yet. The 25 is the uh, is belonging to the Terror Blade. It's the Hex trying to put pressure on No Tail. Yeah, issues. He's like, can someone push me? Thank you. Anna on bottom, hiding in the trees. The Will Moonlight Shadow. 
Norva doesn't see him. Anna. He knows he's cool. getting burnt. Yeah. That's why he's looking around for it. Moonlight Shadow is now going to wear off. Anna. He doesn't see X Nova. X actually he did for half a second. The Glimmer Cape was wearing off, and Anna will back off. How many times must he play Jeez. with fire? That's got to be some balls of steel to be out there. 48 minutes into this third game. And a winner bracket final of TI. Even Jirax, what is this? He's he's not even wanting to be inside the base. This is just posturing. Charles will start with the Hex. They'll put up the bubble and FY. He jumps in. The Cogs pushing him back. Fiend's Grip controlling up Jirax. But then Global Silence will break free. And it's in pretty damn deep. They're tossing Jirax back out again. As Alme with his BKB. Refresher shot. It's about to come off. And yep, he can now use it. The jump in from Jirax. Looking for the dunk. No slammer in this. OG, they're baiting out abilities. They almost get the kill on the Enchantress. She has the Aegis. But top lane, they're, they're, they're getting hit in their tier 3 tower. Arc Warden's gonna take care of this, and LGD, they find nothing. They use their cheese, they use their refresher shard. They're running out of time on this Aegis too. It's only got about a minute left. So all the advantage they were having to try and breach the high ground against OG, well, it Ami. just doesn't exist. I mean, might find something here. Well, they kind of find each other, actually, with this defensive yeah. ward from OG. Great observer in Sentry. They just try and get Anna back as quick as they possibly can. A Spectral Dagger thrown out. Chalice comes in. Great vision. The Dagon and the Dunk! They'll burn the Aegis. It was going to time out anyway. Reveals the fact they had the vision, so Sentry was down. Anna, you ain't getting any of that. This will be four bounty runes for LGD. That's what be. they were going over here for, most likely. Anna with the completed Scotty decided to finish this item without buyback. So a very big commitment. He will get nightmared up. Uh, they're trying to find this oh, now. The stun is on Anna. A perfect arrow from Somnus. ES must buy back and bring the Echo Slam forward. Anna, no spectral horn. LGD, you're really clumped. You've got to be careful about the jump, and that's why they try and split it out, pushing the spec the wrong way around. The heart will now tick in, so he's able to regenerate up nice and quick. And they want to have the fight. Well. Uh, is FY just, uh, just... The view is good. Then, uh, maybe not so good anymore. Really cliffed up. No real man to get back down again. He's got blade mail at least, but they're just jumping, they're slamming, they're killing. And this man, uh, they, yep, got him. That's a gem. That is the gem of true sight down. They knew that he was stuck up there from the hook shot earlier when he jumped on Jerry. Oh, now they go bottom lane. The hex is out. They find Chalice. Anna and Thompson trying to combine together. Ame wants to help him out. Chalice still at half life. The jump out from Anna, but now the damage so heavy. Ame doing the work, but Anna is still a beast. They cannot bring him down just with those those two players. They bring in Somnus. They bring in X Nova, and they're gonna find Jirax. A quick stun. The control. X Nova is deleted from the game. Buybacks are available, but the rest of OG, they do not want to continue the battle. This game is so close. You know what this game reminds me of? Remember that LFY versus VP game that uh, we got to have a lot of fun casting at a previous TI? Yeah, 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 yeah. we're coming back there. Oh, do you mean the, wasn't it Liquid VP that it you're was, thinking of maybe? It was two hours, I remember it was two I think hours. It was Liquid VP, last TI. That was, yeah. a, that was a crazy game. That was a very crazy game. Well, the high ground defense from OG can go straight back down that line, and to LGD, they control the map. They've got fantastic team fight, but the intimidation of going high ground is just so scary. Well, what I can tell you is Dota Plus thinks Radiant's going to win. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, Dota Plus, you got no data on this. It doesn't exist. You can't calculate the pressure of a human being. It's a minor advantage. It's 51 to 49. Oh. Radiant favored, clearly. LGD, they wait once more. Roshan may respawn in a minute, a minute and 30 seconds. OG are coming out. They have their Observer down. They saw Chalice farming up the Ancients. That's why Jirik's hoping for a fight. Jumps in towards the mid, lands the oh. Fissure, and then a quick jump back out he again. He could have got Hex there. That was actually scary. He doesn't have buyback, so got to be careful. Ame was there. Didn't react quick enough. Oh, that's a nice rune. Double damage rune for Ame. He's got a Refresher Orb now in the backpack of the Terror Blade, so... The shard was used. Refresher Orb was able to give him this double metamorphosis. Now a buyback's looking as well. Silencer, as well as Arc Warden, has it for OG. It's almost all up for LGD bar the Bane. You wonder if Ame at some point is going to replace this S and Y. He, feels, he probably feels like he needs the movement speed from this, <laughs> since he doesn't have the boots, but maybe there's value in a Manta here at some point instead. This top lane continues to push in. 
Spectral daggers are flying out from Anna. He's adding the pressure, trying to get LGD to look behind. And if they don't come back, Anna can just attack and then Spectral hold back to the team. And in fact, here comes TP. Uh, th there stops TP. Oh, hello. Yeah, nice illusion. Scouting out from the Terra Blade. Moonlight Shadow from, from PSG LGD. They want to find the opportunity. That's just a fake Thompson. Trying to bait the attack in the mid. It'll take so much to get rid of him. And they hold the creep wave back. But this Moonlight Shadow, we're level 25 now on the Mirana. This is why Somnus can just continuously spam this. And that's the real Anna on the front line. OG right behind Ame. Gets the jump, finds the Pugna. Vision will not find it. Stunt Pugna with no buyback. OG, they were really playing with fire. The Hex is out in the Terra Blade. Spectral Haunt looking for the frontline attack, but that's why Somnus goes into the back oh, line. The BKP, they're into the back line. Shaker, he's bouncing around. Hawk shot as she stands on the way through. He has his gun. No buybacks available. Have LGD done it? They're holding Anna. Hold him in place. Chalice will find the damage. F5 will die for it. No, really? Anna is actually actually running away, but it won't stop Arme from blinking up, looking for the tier 3 tower. Two players left alive for OG, they're the big ones however. Thompson and Anna on the defense duty fortification. It's delayed as much as they possibly can. And now the jump out, Hex, the boy in the bubble, Thompson able to be protected once again, Chalice, very very low on mana, they have a lot, but Arme, he'll change the life with Anna, Thompson needs to be pushed away, able to do so, FY jumps onto the illusion only, so the hookshot won't be able to connect, but Anna, he needs to retreat, there's so much damage, Anna, 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 down, buyback is available, they still have not taken the mid racks, OG are just trying to delay LGD for the moment, five heroes around, the bubble is there, Protecting the melee racks, Anna. Sunder! By once again, the Sunder switches to life. Army's back up to full health, but the damage from Thompson, it's good enough to kill off the bait. Buyback is there. Somnus leaves forward. They just keep bunching them around, but they're still battling from inside the bubble. Pugna will come to the world, living LGD. They're going for the GG push. They're going after the tier 4 towers. OG, they have to hold the line. They have the numbers. Step in from the side with the Dagon army, but no! Sunder is back up. It is there. Chalice will fall. They lose the Enchantress. FY pushing around. Anna, he's so low. Can they get the die back on him? You bet your Nelly they can. Arme still very, very low. The blast will kill him off. But buyback. LGD want this now. LGD, or can they? Back enough? No, they're not. Terra Blade. BT's forward. The ball is up. Thompson needs to defend. X Nova very visible. You've got a very, very low life Mirana. But OG, they can't find the target. X Nova, he's got the grip. He's got the control. He's got the kill. Thompson is down. But ES is up. Where the echo slam. Oh, there forward. There's your slam. There's the dunk. There's the play. Jirax, the savior of OG. Looking for more. Charles is now on the run. They tried to go for the GG push. They didn't get much more than this. And now, look at him go. BT forward. Hit the stun. Nail the stun. Nail Charles. Maybe not. Hex is up. Charles still on the run. The Moonlight Shadow. It's like it never ends. It's the same with the dunking from Jirax. This guy's an NBA all-star. Looking for the kill into Charles. Another TP coming forward. Hookshot from FY. Gets involved in the fight, but Thompson will arrive, hexing up onto FY, the leap out, the fissure is available, is there a follow-up, Thompson is there, they push forward, they get the control, and they're bringing FY down, LGD with four heroes who do not have buyback, OG, they are gonna push, but how much damage can they do in the window that they have? They have no waves, Toby, this is gonna take a long time to cross all the way across the river. Probably will be enough time to get one lane of barracks in LGD's base, but if they do win a team fight there afterwards, there's no buybacks left on either team, I do think. Only Pugna. Seb still Whoa. has his. It's getting nervous. They're the trying to go through. In the mid. There is a glyph. Thompson, Thompson and GRX. It sounds like a brand of victory. They'll come in through the mid, taking the tier 3 tower. Oh, they They're the going for tier 4s now. LGD, my how the tables are turned. OG are going for the tier 4s. Charles is there deep end. They will be up in just a second. The fortification, it buys time. The Hex is there from Chalice, but now here comes Anna. He's on the front lines. Jirax leaping forward. All he has to do is create space for OG to do it. To get to the grand final of TI8. Tip him up. Poor tip him over. The lead comes forward. They've got the control. X Nova, he'll go down. This is the
the game. LGD have nothing left. OG have done it. It goes the distance. It goes to three. OG, how many times have they reached the grand final? Could only have a major.